So I'm here in Camden in London. I'm about to meet up with Darren O'Reilly, who I met when he came on my service accommodation training. And Darren has agreed to show us around one of his service accommodation properties, which is actually five apartments. So let's take a look. Hi, Darren, how are you doing? Hello, Kev, all good. good. to see you Thank again. You. Cheers for coming so down. this is so. the place, the famous place. Yeah, this is it. Let's go in, take you in. So we've only got access to three of the units a day. Start at the top. Be prepared for the climb. So I'm just uh, taking you into this apartment. This is apartment three of five we've got in this block. Obviously this is the, uh, the open space lounge diner. This is a two bedroom. We've done this as four individual beds to appeal to the contractor market. So yep. should we go in? So obviously these are slightly smaller beds just to give a bit more room here. They're not zip and link, but they are. They can be pushed together to form a double. If a couple book and they want to push the beds together, that's fine. But if contractors, they want to push the beds together as well. Absolutely. Who's judging? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> who's judging? <laughs> and then the other room is simply a mirror of that. Quick tip for the guys as well. No wardrobe, because we take up the floor space, so we put use these hanging rails. Just give more appearance of room space. I like the artwork, it's nice. Thank you, yeah, just something nice and bold on the wall. Bring a bit of colour into it. So this is obviously a little lounge area, smart TV. Um, well, that's actually not a smart TV. We've got a Rocco box, I think that is on top there, that makes that a smart TV. This was already in the property, so utilising what was left for us. Um, yeah. Obviously, you can see it's an old converted building by this fake door that's just been covered up. Could have been an entrance into this place when it was actually a full house. Then obviously we've got a ridiculously large bathroom here. This is obviously a converted Georgian style house. So this would have cool. been one of the original bathrooms in the place. The old fittings as well, sash windows. Ironically though, we are three levels up and someone did moan that they're overlooked at in here, which is quite ironic. I had, um, in our hotel, I personally saw myself, people opposite. You could see them showering and though it was slightly um, frosted glass, it wasn't even anything to the imagination. Yeah. Like I got <laughs> in touch with the owner because it was rented and I got him to, to address it because my hotel guests were complaining about naked people opposite the hotel. Just a little kitchenette area. Got the basics for them. As we say, we're literally in the heart of Candomere, so they've got plenty of restaurants and yes. eateries and bars around the place. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Yeah, down to the uh, first floor. This one, similar-ish layout to upstairs. So this one, we've gone for a, a double bed in here. And we did actually put the wardrobe in this one because it was it's so large. Nice. And then we've got a room at the front of the property that's got uh, two singles in again. So it can again sleep four, but the contractors that like each other can stay in this one. Yeah, <laughs> so I noticed you've got a nice bit of artwork. It's worth pointing out that it's quite big yeah. on the wall, but people make the mistake of putting small pictures on a wall and then in the photos for the, the listings, they look even smaller again. So yeah. it's actually very smart that you've put a nice big picture on because then the colours really pop and it actually works much better for the photos. And then just through again, similar sort of kitchen to upstairs, just to basic utensils, fridge, freezer, kettle, toaster, that's all you need, I believe. I like putting this up uh, here, clears the decks a bit. Obviously this one's got a little dining table as well, but like I say, you know, being in the heart of Cairn, I don't think there's gonna be many people eating in and then through into the lounge again this is lovely with a grand fireplace and the big bay windows with the shutters as well just gives it a nice feature smart telly this one smart tv that one yeah the other one upstairs is the only one we haven't actually purchased for the apartment and these are again not zipping links but these are double singles that can be yeah. again pushed together and again nice big artwork that's matching the colors of the throws and the cushions the bathroom as well and this is uh, fun and games in here this is obviously just a little again high ceiling functional bathroom the only thing is that <laughs> macerating toilet? Macerated toilet, yeah, it causes us headaches. We because had to someone had blocked the macerating toilet. Yep, basically yeah. they're putting baby wipes and stuff down there. And I'll spare you the dramas of what come up through there, but you can imagine <laughs> what come up through there. I'm not sure if people know about the macerated toilets, but obviously they've got to put it into a smaller tube because there's not the functionality within the house to put the big four inch pipe through. And it's uh, worth addressing because, I mean, on the course, we obviously talk about trying to stay away from macerating toilets, the Saniflow toilets, because guests will definitely block them. But ultimately, you don't own the, the property, right? Because it's a rent to SA. So it would cost thousands and thousands to solve the problem in getting a four inch waste pipe out of this in a room because it's not an external wall and so obviously the owners come up with a macerating toilet solution which you're just gonna have to manage right now yeah. that uh, now you're using it as service combination. So what we're going to do now is literally at every point the guest has to come to use it we're going to put in our terms and conditions about it. We're going to have it on our guest guide, but we're also going to put a seal over the actual seat with a leaflet under it. They could pay up to 700 pounds. Okay, so just one more to look at now. Just one more, one yes, more. we go yeah, downstairs. Cool. Let's go and have a look. The ground floor. This one has an exceptionally large kitchen. 
way too big for the way it's been divided up and separated, but this again is another two bed. And this one, we went slightly different by having two double beds in. So this is just a double room. So the way it's been put in, is a little bit of a rejig with a fireplace there. Again, this one, we decided to put wardrobes in just because the rooms are slightly bigger. Nice big window overlooking the parks. And then the other one is, like I say, it's mirror to the second floor. Got to put me up bed Double well. bed, wardrobe. And um, yeah, I think that was one of the last guests. They wanted a child staying. So we've got that in storage that we just gave them. And the fan for hot weather. Not that we get much hot weather these days. No, and this one, it was a little bit of a peculiar space here, but you know, we've done what we could. Little two seater sofa bed. That was the only one that actually fit in there. And, the funny and another full store. store, yeah. Yeah. Which would have been, I'll say it'd be lovely to see how it was when it was originally a house. Obviously that would have been the kitchen that would have fed the whole house above and I assume the basement would have been servant quarters. We did have a table there originally, but we decided to bring this bench style one into the kitchen. Do you want to see the little bathroom at the back there? Yeah. This is a smaller bathroom, probably not ideal for the larger style guests, <laughs> but functional shower, Next toilet. toilet. Mind your head. Yeah. <laughs> I don't suffer from that problem. <laughs> right. All right, so... Rent to SA. Yep. And you're renting this direct from a landlord. Yep. Yeah. So you haven't done it through a letting agent, but we'll, no, we'll no. talk about rent to SA from letting agents later on. So a lot of people are saying, well, how can that be legal, renting a property from a landlord and using it as a short term rental, using it and listing it on Airbnb? So um, do you want to just, just talk about that? I mean, you obviously come on my, been on my training, so we've taught you how to do it legally and all above board. Yeah, pretty much. You know, under your advice, we took it in. We, we found this for a source, as you know, and this we just put into the standard sort of company let. So. The landlord is fully aware, we told them what we're planning to do, and it's all detailed in the contract. So it's a legal contract that's fit for purpose to rent to service accommodation from a landlord. And in the contract, it, it states clearly how the property is going to be used. And so it's really important that everybody understands not to use an AST, an assured shorthold tenancy agreement, when you're taking a property from a landlord in order to do service accommodation, because that, that contract is not fit for purpose. That is for tenants who live in a property. If somebody did it on an AST, then yes, that would not be legal, but clearly you're doing it uh, legally and above board. Plenty of people that come on our training, as you know, you know yeah. them, um, do rent to SA via a letting agent. But just to explain that, via a letting agent, you would you would use usually the letting agent's um, company let agreement, but you do still explain to the letting agent that um, you're going to be using the property as service accommodation. So the important thing to remember is that the letting agent's company let agreement is going to say, for instance, that the property is going to be used for the company's employees. Well, it's not. It's going to be used for the company's guests. But as long as you've explained to the letting agent in advance and they're happy to rent the property to you for service accommodation, then they're not going to have an issue with amending the company let agreement to make it fit for all purpose. So really important for everybody to remember here, whatever agreement um, is signed, it has to be stating very clearly that the property is being used as serviced accommodation. Okay, so should we just talk about how you ended up in this property? How did that happen? Yeah, so um, I mean, as you probably guessed, I'm a South Londoner, geezer, as you say. Um, so yeah, I, I was basically looking for properties around London. I'm on a mailing list for a couple of sources and this one come through to me from one of them. So it's important to remember that sourcing agents, they don't only source properties for people to buy. There are sourcing agents that source properties for people to, like Darren is doing, rent and use our service accommodation. So the sourcing agent will have explained to the owner that um, they're gonna source the property on to someone to use it as service accommodation. So all informed, everyone's good. Yeah. How much was the sourcing fee? Yeah, a little bit of bone of contention, but that was a higher fee. But you know, when we spoke about it with a business partner, um, that was in the region of 15,000. You tell me in hindsight, happy with paying that? Yeah, no, like I say, we negotiated it. it was, initially it was like, ouch. You know, yeah. we weren't anticipating paying such a large fee, but you know, in hindsight, yeah, the sources bought us a fantastic property, so truly yeah. thankful for what they showed us and, and got yeah. us into. So yeah, cool. So sourcing fee, fifteen grand for five units per property. What rent are you paying to the owner? Yeah, so we we broke it down. Obviously, there's five units. We just divided the grand total what they wanted for the whole block by five, which equates to two thousand eight hundred and fifty per unit. So £2,850 rent yes, every single month. It. So certain people are going, Phew. now the thing is, this is London, okay, so it's, or London, no. okay, <laughs> London prices. But the thing is, with service accommodation, the night rates are higher too, so it's all relative. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, what sort of night rate can you achieve here? Anything from 175 to £500 a night. 
Yeah. So uh, when there's a, when there's events and when there's gigs yeah. and when there's you know higher demand for people to come to Camden, you raise your your night rates whenever there's more demand for service combination. Yeah. How much turnover in terms of total bookings are you getting in a month? Six thousand pound a month would be an average sort of yeah. spread across the whole year. Okay. So six grand a month. month Per property. Per property. Turnover is vanity, profit, sanity, right? Okay. So what sort of profit, pre-tax profit, are you actually making per property? Yeah, so after all the costs, you know, the cleaning, utilities, shares, that generally equates to about £1,800 net profit per unit at £6,000. So ultimately, once you've paid off your, you know, you're paying your initial deposits on, on the property, what's that, like one month in advance? Yeah, yeah, so we pay a month's deposit and uh, the monthly And then the monthly rent, rent. Yeah. yeah, and then obviously your sourcing <coughs> fee. So literally, you're into full profit in a, in a matter of months, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, what yeah. other property strategy enables you to do that? So if you found all of this useful and you want to be like Darren and cash flowing a lot of money from somebody else's property, I've put a free report somewhere in this video. There's a link to download a free ebook that's going to give you a lot more information on how to start and scale your own serviced accommodation business and so if you've enjoyed the content in this video make sure to like and subscribe hit that notification bell to get a lot more good content